it's time for another round of Hot GPT. Our topic today is how to use ChatGPT to improve your communications. Okay, ready to go? Start generating. I'm going to start out by saying it's a little meta for Pat GPT to be talking about Chat GPT. I get that. But it isn't just about Chat GPT, of course, because any gen AI can also do the same stuff. So you want to go to Bard? Great. Doesn't have to be Chat GPT. But the point here is these things are powerful and they're really great in terms of kind of leveling up, amping up your communications. And I've realized this because I subscribe to ChatGPT and I've been using it for a bunch of different ways. In fact, AI in general, like Grammarly, which has been really powerful in terms of improving my writing, all that. I mean, I just the spell check on Grammarly alone is incredible. Now I'll probably get killed by ChatGPT, but still I love that. And so I just want to give you a couple of ideas that you may not have thought of with my own personal experience behind them about how to use Gen AI in communications, all right? So let's start with number one. The first one is that you can use ChatGPT to practice conversations like a sparring partner when you wanna have a conversation that you're not sure quite what to do. Now, it really is kind of interesting. You can call it Pat GPT if you want, if that feels better. But you can practice things like active listening. Obviously, you're reading, not listening. But you can listen on, on the app, right? It talks to you if you check that out. Asking open-ended questions, responding appropriately to different kinds of things. You can actually practice having a conversation that may be a little weird, right? Like ask it to role play with you about quitting your job. And let me tell you something, you'll never get the same answer twice, which is kind of interesting. You can tell it to play the role of somebody who's angry or somebody who is happy or somebody that's this or that. So you can just sort of ask it to be your conversation partner in a bunch of different ways. And at the very least, the very least, you'll get a little practice before you go into that conversation. Now, I would encourage you to take what you learn and then practice it IRL with a human being that is sentient, and I don't think ChatGPT is sentient, even though some people said that they thought AI was sentient. I don't think so. That's coming down the pike maybe, but not today. But I would encourage but to talk to somebody in real life, but I think it's just a great way to sort of flesh out ideas, start experimenting a little bit before you actually go there. All right, I got two more for you in a moment right after this break. FOMO, FOMO. All right, we are back. We are talking about how to use Gen AI to improve communication. So number two, it's really powerful to get feedback. So what I love to do is drop in a message I have written and basically get ChatGPT to give me feedback on the writing. Now, I love my own writes. I'm not looking to get ChatGPT to rewrite everything so I sound like ChatGPT because I prefer PatGPT. But it is, it's a great spell checker. It's a great grammar checker. It can give you a sense of whether your style is, is cohesive. It just is wonderful in terms of getting another set of eyes on something you've written. And what's cool to do too, in terms of communication, is say you've been taking notes in meetings, What's beautiful is that you can then dump that in a chat GPT and tell it to write a little memo. Now do read that over because I've had some mixed, mixed results on that front. Sort of like you read the thing and you're like, well, there's a little hallucination in here. But it's a wonderful way of taking something you have already, say it's a memo or whatever you have, and then getting it to work with you to refine it. Maybe you have a long memo and you want a summary, right? Wonderful way to take your writing and then either transform it or get feedback to make that writing better. And for people who maybe aren't native English speakers or, you know, some other language that you want to work with, it's powerful because you can translate 
Oh, that's my favorite part. You write the email in English and then you translate it to the language you want it to be. And even though, for example, I speak Spanish, sure, but my Spanish is not as good as my English. So if I write the email in Spanish, I will ask it to check it or I write it in English and just tell it to translate because I'm being lazy that day. Very powerful stuff. And finally, this is the one I really like. It's so fun. So what, what's really cool is I used to go to this. I used a lot of thesauruses. I'm always looking for different ways to say the same thing so that it sounds more interesting. And I was living on thesaurus.com. But now I just asked GPT to give me 20 words that are synonyms of a certain word. And here we go. Poor thesaurus.com is going to go out of business. But chat GPT just does a really good job. It's I think it's much quicker. And so what I love to do in terms of generating words and ideas is I will, for example, say uh, I'm trying to name something. You guys know I like to name things. I'm like, I'm trying to come up with a name for, I don't even know, just, you know, doing a podcast about chat GPT. I will ask it to come up with different names that it could possibly be. And it will generate some terrible names. Usually they're awful, but then I'll ask it for synonyms around some of the concepts. And I start generating a lot of ideas into like a word cloud that I can then pull from using my expertise, right? Because I'm using ChatGPT to generate ideas. And then I then use my little brain to cur curate it and come up with my own concept. So that is a really wonderful, powerful way to use this thing. A lot of ideas in there. I bet you're using some of them. Maybe you're not doing all of them. Maybe you've never even tried it. Go try it. I'm telling you, the translation, the synonyms, the marketing ideas, the reading of emails or memos to either make them better or to summarize them or to generate other stuff or just the conversational feedback. It's all magical. I love it. I love you, ChatGPT. <laughs> All right. That is it for today. If you have hot ideas about this, by the way, if you are doing something that you that you just think is going to be better or more interesting or just additive to what I've talked about today, I want to hear about it. I am trying to learn and it's moving quickly and I'm sure I'm not doing half of what I could do. So reach out to me. You can find me at let's connect at patrickmcginnis.com on Instagram at Patrick J. McGinnis and on X Twitter at PJ McGinnis. Check it out. Let me know. And I will see you on Thursday with another episode of FOMO Sapiens. Until then, take care of yourselves, FOMO Sapiens. And Pat GPT, stop generating. FOMO. FOMO Sapiens is recorded in New York City. Theme music is by Mike McGinnis and editing and post-production is by Josh Elstro. If you like today's show, please be sure to rate it and recommend it to your friends. And as always, you can find me at FOMOSapiens.com and at PatrickMcGinnis.com. To advertise on FOMO Sapiens, reach out to contact at FOMOSapiens.com.